Um, welcome everybody, I'm Helen Browning, I'm Chief Executive of the Soil Association and also an organic farmer. And it is just brilliant to see people in real life after all this time. Really fantastic to be getting together in this way. And there couldn't be a more important time, it seems to me, for holding this conference on nature and net zero and food security, exploring the agroecological solutions. The debate on the future of farming has raged for many years, many decades, but the beginnings of a much more progressive course in policy terms started really with Gove's Health and Harmony. Doesn't that seem an age ago now? Uh, and the amazing work, so much amazing work, has been done since then, leading to a growing consensus that agroecology, farming in a way, in a way that learns from and cares from na for nature, is the optimal route for the majority of our land. It is possible and it is increasingly popular. That momentum and endorsement is evidenced by great reports from the Food, Farming and Countryside Commission, including the analysis they did in partnership with IDRI, showing that an agroecological future could feed us well while reversing the catastrophic decline in farmland biodiversity. The work done by the National Food Strategy, such a strong and compelling evidence base and clear conclusions that include endorsing agroecology, low input farming as the major land use. The work done by DEFRA in seeking to get all farmers on the bus in setting a new direction for farming in the countryside through the new ELMS and Sustainable Farming Incentive. And all this has been done during such a time of turbulence and disruption to our food, farming and forestry systems. Brexit, then COVID and now war. The UK, like much of the world, has been reeling from one shock to another and there's been a risk, and there is still a grave risk, that attention and resource is diverted from the fundamental solutions that the land can offer to short-term sticking plasters, which too often look like business as usual. So the context of this conference could not be more challenging and urgent. The climate and nature crises demand that we act now but uncertainty for farmers has just been magnified by the Ukraine war. So we need to get behind the no regrets opportunities to improve resilience. That's why we agree with the national food strategy that the time is now to support an agroecological transition in the context of a wider food system reform and why we urgently need a strong white paper response from government. The National Food Strategy set out a, a really bold ambition for agroecological farming in its three compartment model, assuming that most farmers on most land will be farming agroecologically in future. Even the higher intensity compartment is based on agroecological principles, as demonstrated by the Craig Livingston case study in the report. Locally, a state where he is farm manager has reduced nitrogen, synthetic nitrogen use by 32% and pesticides by 42% without reducing yields. Through focusing on soil health, rotations, cover crops, getting sheep back onto the land, green waste compost, and he aims for no synthetic nitrogen when his soils are in good enough heart and condition. The key questions that we hope this conference will begin to address uh, what are the politics now, and the economics too, of achieving this farming transition in practice? What does this look like for farm businesses? How can elms and public money for public goods pull together with natural capital markets and agri-innovation and shorter supply chains to create viable pathways? How can we ensure that farmers can be in the driving seat of this transition? of the innovation we need 
and the tree revolution too. For those that don't know the Soil Association so well, our 75 year history has been one of finding ways to transform the future from the ground up. We work with farmers, growers, woodland and forestry managers, and with teachers, school cooks, caterers and businesses from many walks of life, not just as an auditor of the progress that they're making, but as advisors and supporters through our many programs and initiatives, such as Food for Life, which helps make healthy and sustainable diets normal in schools and other settings. Innovative Farmers, which supports farmers with small grants and research assistance to experiment with new and sustainable methods. It's our 10 year anniversary this year, so we've got lots to celebrate on Innovative Farmers. Sustainable Food Places, giving a framework to cities and regions who want to make great food a defining characteristic of their community. And mo most recently of Soil Association Exchange. Soil Association Exchange will help agree the metrics and methodologies of getting accurate data on the environmental, social, and animal welfare outcomes the world needs, so that farmers and land managers, wherever they are starting from, can understand how they are doing and what they might change to improve still further, and hopefully get financially rewarded for that. We're piloting on over 100 farms right now, so do watch this space and let us know uh, if you'd like to get involved. All this work depends entirely on contributions with like-minded food and farming champions, brilliant people and organizations everywhere. And as a charity, we can't do any of this work without the support of our funders and members to whom we are always extremely grateful. And while today is all about England, we're delighted to be hosting a sister reception and exhibition in Scottish Parliament on the 1st of June. So enough from me to kick off the day. I'm now going to hand over to Joe Lewis, our amazing policy director and mastermind of this conference. Joe, over to you.